as Ben mentioned, I work with a lot of companies that are working on implementing a model-based design or a 3D master process. And one of the first things we always do is talk to them about why they want to do that. And we really get two sets of answers when we ask that question. One has to do with eliminating the effort and the frustration of creating and maintaining uh, 2D drawings and keeping them synchronized with um, with the, with the 3D, the 2D and the 3D synchronized. And to do that, we need to create annotations. So we need a 3D model, first of all. We use this model here today. We need to make, make annotations that are graphical. So they, they're human readable, what we call them. And that means that you can use them in place of a drawing. So anywhere you would use a drawing, you can take this 3D model with its 3D annotations and people can read it. And the second set of answers that we get that are maybe more interesting for today is to make these annotations um, machine readable so that we can uh, have a computer read them. And to do that, they need to be not only graphical, but semantic. So they need to follow a set of rules or standard, and they need to be attached to a specific feature in the 3D. And the way we create those in CATIA is with functional tolerancing and annotation. So I've Finish my 3D model. I'm in the part design workbench. We're going to switch now to functional tolerancing and annotation workbench. So now um, Gary was dealing with a single component <clears throat> and putting GD&T on it. And uh, we ended with the question, are the numbers right? Well, those numbers are based on the final requirements of the final assembly. So now we're going to move into 3D tolerance analysis, <clears throat> which is 3DCS for CATIA B5. If I come up here in the start menu, we are integrated into CATIA. So underneath the analysis simulation, you will see a uh, <clears throat> application 3DCS variation. This gets you to the desktop that you're looking at on my screen right now. Currently, I'm going to go ahead and just assemble this and hit deviate. And you can see, yeah, you can see the parts are jiggling around. I had to look up on the screen and see how you guys could see it. And you can see this number changing. And every time this number changes, the uh, software is building another shifter assembly. And each shifter assembly is different because 3DCS is applying the GD&T tolerance variation to the detail parts. So when you do tolerance analysis, <clears throat> there's three main inputs, moves that define how these components go together. That allows me to animate this through my build process, and you can see it assemble. Measurements that define what it is we want to verify. <clears throat> so if I click on these measurements down here, you can see it's highlighting. We want to measure, you know, how much is the tip of this shifter varying, or, you know, how much is the shaft varying? The variation is going to decrease as we go down this shaft and the shaft is attached right here. So when you look at, when you look at this, um, all of the 3DCS information is stored in the applications folder of the product file and inside this applications folder kind of like the uh, drawing file everything is connected so if I click on a part it's linked and you can see how it's highlighting in the CATIA tree as well as highlighting in our tree you can see um, it pulled in 10 GD&T callouts and I got some more mesh what's wow. in what's interesting is I did not get mesh on this face here, even though I have this, you know, angularity call out. This face meshed though, and the reason why that face meshed is this surface is a functional face for this lever bracket to mate to. And since that surface is there, I have this GD&T right here, which is, you know, controlling the distance of this face to this face. So now, unfortunately, it meshed this face as well. But after I extracted that, 
I can now hit deviate. And now you can see I'm back to everything, um, everything deviating. So the next thing I got to do is let's pretend, I mean, I do have some measurements, but I also have some product gd &T. So this is a sneak peek. If I come up here, there's a new button here now that's going to say update gd measurements. 